Burkina Faso's military leader is ousted in its second coup this year. Similar takeovers in Guinea and Mali have raised fears of a rollback of democracy in West Africa. What's behind the instability and how should the international community respond? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Foli Batibo. Burkina Faso has now witnessed two military coups in nine months. Leader Paul-Henri Damiba was overthrown by some of the same soldiers who first backed him in the January takeover. On Friday, people woke up to the sound of gunfire around the presidential palace and military barracks in the capital, Ouagadougou. Soldiers blocked major roads. Damiba appealed for calm, but soon protesters waving Burkina Bay and Russian flags began to call for his removal. Damiba has been in power for nine months. He has killed Burkina Faso. He has sold all of us. He is incompetent. The people will raise their voices to make him understand that they are hurt. Burkina Bay is no longer agree with the partnerships that bind us with France. We are not in favor of coups, but we are in favor of coups that lead us to cooperate with other partners who will be win-win partners. Members of special forces led by Captain Ibrahim Traore later appeared on television to say they've ousted Damiba. They accused him of failing to stop attacks by armed groups. Borders have been closed and all political activity suspended. Our common ideal was betrayed by our leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Damiba, in whom we had placed all our trust. Indeed, the deterioration of the security situation, which justified our action, has been relegated to the background in favor of unfortunate political adventures. The coup marks the sixth military power grab in the Western Central Africa region in just over two years. In January, the first in Burkina Faso this year led to its suspension from the 15-member Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS. Mali saw coups in both 2020 and 2021, prompting its suspension from ECOWAS and the African Union. ECOWAS lifted sanctions in July after military leaders agreed to hold elections next year. But relations with former colonial power our France deteriorated and French forces withdrew. However, that wasn't the case with Chad when the army took power in April 2021 after President Idris Deby was killed on the battlefield. France and regional bodies showed little reaction when his son replaced him. Five months later, President Alpha Conde was ousted in Guinea. It was also suspended by ECOWAS and sanctions were imposed. Guinea's ruling military junta now has a month to set a transition period back to civilian rule or face tougher sanctions. Al Jazeera's Nicholas Haack has more. We're in Dakar, Senegal, a country where there's never been a coup or even an attempted coup. People here vote for their president and the outcomes of elections are largely accepted. It's an exception in a region marked by coups after coups. Just in the last two years, there's been coup within coups more recently in Burkina Faso. So why is this happening? Well, there's a lack of trust in democracy and democratic institutions. West African leaders are perceived by many as corrupt and as democracy is seen as corrupt itself. Now, all these countries have something in common. They're former French colonies. And in each of these countries, including here in Senegal, there are military bases. And despite the presence of French forces on the ground, it's in countries where we're seeing armed groups gaining grounds that we're seeing coups. There's this feeling that elected officials are unable to do what the military can, which is to bring back peace and security in a region marred by violence by armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL. And so that's what's at stake in Burkina Faso. For the young Captain Traore to bring back peace and security to a country where the government has lost 40% of the land. Nicholas Hawk for Inside Story.
Well, let's bring in our guests now in Mali's capital, Bamako, Fahir Aman Rodrigue Kone, senior researcher at the Institute for Security Studies. In Casablanca, Morocco, Adam Agay, political commentator and former director of information at ECOWAS. And in Uppsala, Sweden, Emmanuel Kwaisi Aning, visiting chair at Uppsala University's Nordic Africa Institute. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Thank you so much for being on Inside Story. Fahir Aman in Bamako, let me start with you. Uh, just over a week ago, Burkina Faso's ousted leader, Amiba gave an impassioned speech at the UN General Assembly defending the coup that he led in January, saying that it was an issue of survival for his country, Burkina Faso. He promised to make it more secure. And here we are, nine months after that coup, he is also ousted. What went wrong for him? Why did his own soldiers turn against him? Uh, thank you for inviting me for the discussion. Uh, I think uh, um, nine, nine months after, um, there, were, there were not really tangible uh, results for the in the security front. Uh, uh, while, they, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Damiba uh, gave this region of um, the, uh, uh, the incapacity of uh, the previous regime, civilian elected regime, to fight against the Janet insurrection, they have not done... Uh, they are not being able to do better. Uh, the country now remains the, the epicenter of jihadist attacks in the Sahel. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, the, uh, the, the 13 region uh, of the country are under uh, 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 daily attacks, and there are more than uh, almost two uh, Burkina Bay out of 10 uh, uh, have uh, displaced people. So uh, there was no tangible result. And uh, inside uh, the, the elites, the military elites, there were cr a heavy criticism right. uh, to his choices. No tangible results, you say. Adam Agay in Casablanca, you, you don't see this as a surprise, this new coup in Burkina Faso. What do you think led to the divisions within the army? Oh, it was clear that uh, Colonel Damiba was uh, running the show as a solitary person. Many uh, in the rank and file were not happy with his zigzagging positions and uh, his uh, close relationship with uh, the Ivorian president, Alassane Ouattara, whom he visited recently, and his visit to the former president of Burkina Faso, who lives in exile in uh, Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, was another reason why they were not happy about him. But beyond all, the reality is that he did not deliver on the reason why, in the first place, he came to power. Eight months, nine months down the line, he was not able to fix the insecurity challenge. Mm. Uh, the country is losing its uh, sovereignty. A huge swath of, of land are under control of the terrorists and the fundamentalists, the jihadists. And also, he is confronted with... Uh, economic problems in the country. So uh, uh, overall, he has not been able to deliver. The incapacity of his regime is the main reason that explains and legitimizes the reason why people intervene and oust him. And nobody has been really shouting or crying for his departure. So okay. this is it's clear that there was a coup in the making coming up. All right. Emmanuel in Uppsala, your thoughts. It's not just Burkina Faso, of course. Uh, we've seen coups also in the last two years in uh, Guinea, in uh, Mali as well. What is behind these repeated takeovers? What's, what's fueling them? And do you think there's a, also a copycat phenomenon going on here? I think what is fueling these coup d'etats relates first and foremost to the failure of democratic governance first to provide generalized security to communities, but also increasingly a lack of economic security, creating a groundswell of a sense of exclusion of victimhood and of dispossession, mm -hmm. all contributing mm -hmm. to undermining the attachment to the state, the loyalty to the state, in which we are seeing a small elite group horrendously corrupt and dissociated, you know, from the populace. These are not copycat coup d'etats. Let us get it very straight. And I've said this several times on your program. 
If West African leaders are unable to pull back from the brink, and there is one more coup d'etat, successful or fairly robust but defeated before June 23rd, mm. no, June 2023, then the edifice of West Africa will begin to crumble. So, so do you think that uh, you talk about a failure of democratic yeah. governance? Do you see this coup spelling the end of democracy in West Africa? It's part of a continuum, but we can pull back from the brink if the countries that are still being governed democratically manage to distribute you know, uh, democratic dividends in such a manner that the populace can feel that democracy <clears throat> is a worthy alternative to autocratic rule. So far, West African leaders are failing in sending signals to their people that they are much more competent mm. than the military regimes. Okay. When they fail to do that, the militaries use the insecurities as a basis to take over. But of course, we know from Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, um, Chad, and Guinea that, are, that the military is not a better alternative. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, so Mali, your thoughts about this? It would seem that the military men, despite their promises, haven't been able to bring about security. As you've said yourself, we've seen an increase in attacks in Burkina Faso, in Mali as well. What have been their limits in terms of security, you think? Is it just all down to a lack of strategy? The people are talking about a lack of uh, broad strategy, holistic strategies, which include uh, military action, but also political processes. But we have to uh, be aware that uh, we are, uh, the, the, the governance, there is a deep structure of uh, failure about uh, the governance uh, in our country. The excitement about democracy in the 80s has uh, tragically uh, turned into a nightmare for population. And uh, the manipulation of democracy has not built strong institutions, including army institutions too. Army institutions have failed to, to, to deliver good governance and the military themselves, there were problems. So they are not or, or, uh, all the time the, the good person or the, uh, the educated person to, 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 to resolve those uh, uh, the, uh, failure of governance. So it's, it's, yes, it's a question of uh, a good strategy, mm -hmm. uh, a strategy which is enrooted in, uh, how to say, political uh, uh, governance, but also um, a good articulated uh, strategy, military strategy. And uh, the insecurity, we have to know that, is not focused in one country, it's a, region, it's a regional threat. Indeed. So uh, for a country itself to, to fight against the jihadist groups without a joint coordination of the action will be, I think for me, a, a lack of time. So there should be a broad strategy, and in this way that ECOWAS, for example, the institutional region, uh, institu uh, regional institution are very important to uh, have the, the rules in this situation and to solve it. Adam Agay, I want to talk to you about ECOWAS's reaction to these coups and, and the general reaction by France and, and also the United States has been to denounce them but at the same time quiet, quietly accept them as done deals, except in the case of Mali, of course, where we've seen a de deteriorating relationship with France and France pulling its troops out of Mali. But it seems that in, in most cases it's business as usual when it comes to Paris and Washington. What should the international response have been? And do you think ECOWAS's sanctions are effective? Has ECOWAS responded uh, effectively? Look, ECOWAS has not uh, been very effective. Everybody knows that ECOWAS is somehow uh, an empty shell. Uh, and they even tried to uh, be nice to Damiba because they were not tough on uh, uh, sanctions uh, concerning Burkina Faso as they have been in the case of Mali and uh, Guinea, where there were other coups. Uh, the problem is that there are uh, progressively a sense of a uh, coup fatigue 
uh, like uh, we have had seen in this region in the past. It's not the first time. In the 70s, West Africa used to be the capital of military coup in the world. Mm -hmm. It is now reclaiming the role. There are many coups happening and more to come down the line because, unfortunately, as a previous speaker said, those who are in charge, whether civilian or military, they are greedy and they are not able to they are not able to deliver on the expected uh, deal in any uh, democratic proposition where the Leviathan, the uh, authority in charge, should be able to deliver goods, security, mm. and health and other uh, amenities. Okay. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So what we can say clearly is that at this moment, the region, the West African region, is left by itself and to itself by the international community. Nobody wants to mingle into what is really definitely a deadlock situation with military and civilian force unable to deliver. Uh, Emmanuel, do so you agree with that? Is in deep Emma trouble. Emmanuel, do, do you agree with that about the role of the international community here? Adama says ECOWAS is an empty shell. The international community doesn't want to get involved. These recent calls have certainly raised questions about uh, you know, the re role of regional and continental multilateral organizations and whether they have, you know, can, can play a role in averting this democratic backsliding. What are your thoughts about this? Well, multilateralism is important and, and it creates, you know, a basis for cohesive, cooperative engagement if the member states who have voluntarily signed on to the protocols and conventions and agreements underpinned by shared norms and principles adhere to them. It has become clear that ECOWAS is incapable of applying these norms and principles mm. in a consistent mm -hmm. manner. Furthermore, I mean, ECOWAS's heads of state, irrespective of who is chair at a particular point in time, believe more in flowery, empty rhetoric of threatening sanctions, which are ineffective, and over time, you know, no one actually refers to Abuja prior to taking any action. Right. Now, when multilateral institutions and its members themselves don't respect the rules that they have signed on to, then it becomes a toothless bulldog, and we are seeing an, an, an ECOWAS that is incapable mm. of implementing ah. its own principles and its own laws. And I think that is very tragic. And the classic case is how Benin, that is facing you know, concerted extremist threat is inviting Rwandese troops to come and help them. There is no clearer demonstration of the lack of efficacy of ECOWAS okay. than when a member state in, in vice So you extra. seem to agree with Adama uh, there with, the, with that issue of ECOWAS. Fahir Iman, we saw Russian flags being waved in Ouagadougou on Friday as you know, France and Europe reduces its presence in that region. Of course, the French have relocated mostly now to Niger. Do you get a sense that Russia and these reports of Russian mercenaries in Mali, in Burkina Faso, do you get a sense that Russia is perhaps getting the upper hand now? And what would Russia gaining a strategic foothold in the region mean for the people and, and the governments in these regions? Well, uh, we're seeing the fatigue that the people are uh, observing against um, uh, seeing that uh, the current government, they cannot uh, fight against uh, the insecurity. There is no, so this uh, uh, need to redefine, uh, I would say, all the strategy. And in this way, uh, we are seeing that uh, people reclaiming uh, to turn the, to turn back to the traditional alliances, uh, the the, uh, the French uh, military, we were the first that had the leadership of the fight in the Sahel country of this uh, um, insecurity. Uh, we the, the the reconfiguration of our strategic alliances, uh, um, I think, uh, should be really 
take, we should be really uh, take very carefully to see how where is the interest of the uh, African state themselves. Um, it, it, Russia is not at its first presence in West Africa. We should remind, remember that right. uh, there were also Russia cooperation with the Malian government, but also the Guinean long time. But how, what, what is, I can say, uh, the, uh, how can we evaluate this engagement in the previous time? What were the, the benefits for us? So there is the need of diversifying the island seas, uh, the military cooperation, not stacking only on the Western cooperation, opening to other also contribution. But at the same time, we need to be the, our, the leadership of our strategy. Okay. We, we need to be the one who are uh, 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 engaging. And uh, so that's why for me, the prior, uh, pr the prior priorities are to enroot on regional institution. Okay. And the, and more, the more the ECOWAS uh, and uh, also the African Union will engage in the situation, the better will be the capacity of the national states and armies to fight against this insecurity. So you say regional organizations should be given the priority in resolving the crisis. Adam Agay, I want to ask you also about the Russian presence and this renewed Russian engagement, it would seem, in the region. Is it good news or bad news? Okay, I will uh, take a different viewpoint from what you hear in the streets of Africa, where the youngsters, they are shouting and crying, dancing. Uh, to call for the Russians to intervene. Uh, as far as I see this situation, it is uh, somehow very bad in the sense that it is stealing the victory of the total party uh, approach from uh, Russia, China, the Turkish uh, coming into Africa and supporting those forces that are not promoting democracy and really being uh, corrupt thoroughly at the hands of the affairs. But what is worse is that the other part in the game traditionally used to be the West, Western nations. But unfortunately, when they meet African leaders, they seem to be numb, to close their eyes and not to speak about the issues of democracy. Take the case of Europe. They hosted a summit Africa Europe in February. Nobody in Europe spoke about the gross violation of human rights, of democratic regression in Africa, corrupt leaders, right. they've been problem this. And if you take America, they're hosting in December, the US-Africa summit with Joe Biden in Washington. And the risk is they will also condone this kind of behavior. So I don't see Russia as a response. It is a fake solution, okay. but unfortunately, with the withdrawal of Western nations and their unethical behavior vis-a-vis -vis Africa, they are giving the chance to autocracy to prevail, unfortunately, with the help of the ordinary populations who believe that Russia or China or the Turkish are good friends to Africa. They are not. It, okay, Emmanuel, I'll give you the last word. What does the future hold? Do you see these military uh, regimes retaining significant influence over politics in these countries in West Africa in the long term? No, I don't think so. No, no, I, I think military regimes are not the way to go. But that is contingent on civilian democratic regimes performing to deliver security, economic growth, development, stability in a manner that citizens of West Africa and the Sahel feel the democratic dividends for which we have fought for for so long. Let me say this and say it very clearly. China, Russia are not Africa's core friends in the long term. Yes, there's been a romantic relationship over the long period during the period of decolonization. But the actions of the Wagner Group in Central African Republic, mm -hmm. in Mali, mm -hmm. and in other places raises Africa concerns about respect for human rights, the rule of law, and the types of regimes that they want to support. Okay. Those regimes basically do not reflect the hopes and aspirations of Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen, for a very interesting discussion. Fahiraman, Rodrigo Kone, Adam Agay, Emmanuel Kwesi Aning. Thank you very much.
And thank you, too, for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can, of course, also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fully Batibo, and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. Bye for now.